airing down with the people. Mm -hmm. Moses is gone for 40 days yeah. and 40 nights. Now mind you, all of these people just walked through <laughs> on dry ground. They just walked through. They and I couldn't imagine what it looked like when they were walking through. You're looking at the sides like, is the water really standing? I wonder if they saw fish. <laughs> I, I see, I, my mind think like that. Like, what did they see when they were walking through this body of water that God has allowed to stand up for them to see how great and powerful he is? Amen. And then you get out into the wilderness where there is no food, and he's sending down men up. Or so they called it. They didn't know what to call it. It was so good. They named it that. From heaven. To feed them every single day. So that they can start trusting in his provision. And then when they get thirsty. He sends the man of God. To strike the rock. And water comes out of the rock. Go strike the rock outside. Let me see your anointing. Amen. Let me see some water. So you're watching this. You see God doing things that human beings do not have the power nor the capacity to do. You're watching it with your natural eye. And then they get out there and have the nerve to get tired of eating the manna. So they start complaining. We've been eating this every day, my God. Like, what is it? Don't that sound like someone? Oh my God, I'm tired of working at this job. This is foolishness. I'm, I'm ready to go. But the Lord is like, I put you there on purpose. I didn't say you can leave. Lord, how did I end up married to this person? This person is getting on my... I thought I heard from you, but this is just not it. This can't be it. It can't be like this for me. I'm sorry, I didn't know the wilderness was supposed to be comfortable. So Moses is gone for 40 days and 40 nights. They've seen all these miracles. They were a part of them. They didn't just witness them. They were a part of the miracles. And then as Moses is gone, they have the nerve to get impatient. And they say, Bible says in chapter number, verse number one, and when the people saw that Moses delayed coming down out of the mount, now mind you, they are at the bottom of the mount. They saw Moses go up the mount, and at the top of the mount, the Bible says there was a cloud. So he didn't just walk his tail on up in a cloud. I couldn't. He didn't walk in a cloud representing the presence of God to the place where they couldn't even see him. So what do you do? When you have people around you that God has used in your life to bring you out of some situations and circumstances and then he calls them away from you so that they can go sit in his presence to get what their next instructions are. How do you respond to that? Do we get attitudes? Oh, she acting funny. I don't know. She didn't even speak to me today. You don't know what God called her to do. And God understands that if he does not remove some people from close proximity, you will put that person in his place and you will make that person an idol. It will hinder you from growing closer to God. So he called Moses up. No doubt he knew how long Moses was going to be gone. We already know that the number 40 represents a time of testing. So I'm sure Moses in God's presence, he didn't even understand, he didn't even know how much time was going by. So for those of you that don't know, when you really get in God's presence, you don't know how much time is going by. It's a whole nother experience. You can care less how much time is going by. All you know is you're in a place that your king, that your father has allowed you to be in and you really don't want to leave. Like the church, turn the lights off, I see you. you don't want to leave. It's an experience that will blow your mind. So the Bible says, so the people 
gathered themselves together unto Aaron. But when I studied this, it said that meant against Aaron. Right. Yeah. Right. Now you have Aaron, and then you have over two million people. Uh -huh. Now I don't know about you, but back in the day, when people used to get jumped, that didn't look good. Yeah. You'd be like, why don't you just let them fight one on one? You don't need to have all your. No, this was a lot of people in Aaron's face. Yeah. You know how intimidating that could be? If you're supposed to be standing there holding your ground and then you have two million plus people coming at you saying what they're getting ready to say, they said up, I mean demanding him. Demanding him. So no doubt in Aaron's mind, he was like, well, if I don't do what they're asking me to do, I can pretty much lose my life out here. Moses out here, I don't know what to do with these people. And to be honest with you, Moses was the one that was called. He was the one that was anointed. Aaron was the one that God allowed. So he says, up, make us God which shall go before us as for the, let me stop right here. Make us gods. Make us gods. Did you not just see what happened outside of man's control? And you're saying, make us gods? Out of what? <laughs> That just goes to show you how our minds, if they're not transformed, yes. we will create stuff that really, that really will get us in trouble. So make us gods which shall go before us. Make us something that's going to go. <laughs> make us something alive that's going to go before us and I mean this is just almost it's like what <laughs> for as this Moses the man now all of a sudden he's just a man before he was just anointed and we following Moses and God is working through Moses now he's dumbing down to just a mere man just because you don't know where he is with God right now so we have to be careful when we dummy down the men and women of God because we don't understand where God is allowing them to be for a season. So the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. We don't know what happened to him. But you know the mountain is still there. You know the cloud is still there. You know the miracles that you saw when you were delivered. You know that you drank water out of a rock. You also know that you ate manna that was raining down from heaven fresh on a daily basis. You also saw the plagues that came against Pharaoh and all his army when you were coming out of the land of Egypt. You also saw the great and mighty hand part the Red Sea when you had to walk through it on dry ground. All of a sudden you get amnesia when you get out into the wilderness. Come on now, teach. Go ahead. Teach the word. So when God delivers you, and he allows you to go through your time of testing. Oh. We get out there and get the nerve to want to call somebody and put them in God's place. Hey. Even though, in order for you to get there, he's already walked you through some miracles. I promise you, everybody in the room, he has. That's just how he rolled. Already. He's already shown you something. He's already manifested something. He's already allowed things to happen just so that you can know that he was real. And you go around and you tell your own testimony. And then get into the wilderness and get amnesia? Because I thought the Bible said he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Break off the golden earrings which 
are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them to me. And all the people broke off the golden earrings which are in their ears and brought them to Aaron. The earrings came from Egypt. <laughs> Listen, before they were delivered, the Lord told Moses, tell, your, tell my people to go to their neighbor's houses and tell them to go and get the gold jewelry and the silver jewelry because he was preparing them to have something for when they was getting ready to get up out of there. He knew they was leaving. He told them to go borrow it. He <laughs> said, go borrow it. So now that same gift that God gave you, when you came out of bondage, you're going to take that same gift and allow it to be Included in the idol that you are getting ready to build because God is not where you think he needs to be when you think he needs to be there. I gotta just I just gotta tell on me. I know where I've been. I know what God has done for me. It was not a man or a woman of God. He used them. But ultimately, it was the power yes. of God that delivered me from the type of bondage that I was in. I don't have time to share it because some of you may look at me funny when I come down, but I just want to give God the glory for what he's done. But in that great deliverance, God gave me some stuff. He gave me my health back. He gave me a sound mind. He gave me supernatural peace. He gave me a joy that is unwavering. The material stuff, that's a bonus. That's a bonus. But how can I take the mind that God gave me and allow it to go back to Egypt? 